Hello, my name is Doug O'Brien. You know, ever since I wrote this book, The User's Guide to Sleight of Mouth, I've gotten a lot of queries about what am I talking about? What, what do I mean by that all beliefs are the same? Because I guess it's rankled a few people. They believe that beliefs are different, that you have a complex equivalent belief or a cause-effect belief. You have higher order beliefs, like beliefs about faith or politics versus I believe I'll have a cheese sandwich. You know, there's differences. And yet, I'm saying that they are all the same in a structural way. When you unpack them fully, you get to a point where you realize that there's, they're all connected, that the cause effect leads to a complex of equivalence. They're all really the same if you unpack them enough. Sleight of mouth, it gives us the ability to help a person change their belief or help you change your own belief, but it really works best. It starts out from knowing what their belief is to start with by listening to and unpacking the belief that they've already got. That's the way that you can most elegantly, most effectively help them to see things differently. And this is where it gets interesting because you know, most people don't do it that way. Most people do it more like, you know, they, they, they'll take a stand for something, you know, I'll even say that phrase, take a stand, this is what I believe, and, and I'm right and you're wrong, and the other person will say, well, this is what I believe, and I'm right and you're wrong, you know, and they start, you know, butting up against each other thing, you know. I prefer a kind of a keto approach, Aikido. It's a uh, martial art that instead of fighting back in the same way, Aikido says, oh, okay, you, you take the impulse, the energy, the argument, the attack, if you will, of the other person, and you say, oh, let's redirect that, and you redirect their energy to a different place. You do it verbally by saying, yes, I agree, and let's look at it from over here, and you see a whole different way of looking. It's like dancing with that other belief system. So we need to appreciate that everybody, everybody, you, me, everyone is right from their own perspective. That they have a way of looking at a, a belief, a situation that's right for them, it works for them, it's functional for them. In order to change to something else, we need to first align with that and then guide them to another way of looking. It's kind of like this. If I were and you were out somewhere on a retreat, perhaps out in the desert somewhere, and we were all sitting in this circle, and then we placed an object in that circle. Perhaps it's at sunset time, and you know, from your side of the circle, from this side, we're seeing this object in the center of the circle, but because the sun is over there and setting in the west, you know, we're seeing it in shadow. In fact, most of the people that were across from are also largely in shadow as well. You know, so we don't really see things particularly clearly from this vantage point. But it is our vantage point nevertheless, and from this viewpoint we are correct. You know, our perception is accurate. The problem is usually not in perception, it's, it has to do with the interpretation of the perception. In fact, that's kind of where the term sleight of mouth comes from. It's like sleight of hand, you know, perception is one thing, but the action is happening someplace else, sleight of hand. Sleight of mouth works with changing the perception, changing the interpretation of the perception. So think about this. Look at it from this perspective, you're right, but if you got up from your side of the circle and started looking at it from you know, different sides of the circle, eventually it'd lead around perhaps to the entire other side where the sun is now behind you and you're focusing on this circle, on this, this object in the middle, you can see it in great clarity now. All the, the light shining, the golden light of the sunset illuminating this thing. It's also illuminating the, the people on the other side of the circle as well as the sky is darkening there in the east, you know? But if this object in the middle of the circle is not an object, but a belief or a concept, you know, perhaps like, uh, you know, I believe that Santa Claus is alive, or I believe in the Yeti, or something like that. You know, you put a label on a, a belief. It's a label, it's not the whole belief, it's just a, a shortcut. It's like most beliefs are not stated in, a, in an entirety, they're just, it's a shortcut. Like, I believe, you know, we're number one, or I, you know, I'm, I, I believe in Santa Claus, or I believe that the Yeti is alive. You know, it's a shortcut, it's like an icon on a computer screen. You know, it's not the whole thing, but if you click on that icon, you start getting all the different files that it represents. So most beliefs are just a label. 
surface structure. We need to delve in deeper. So by knowing what the label is, that's just the start. Because two people can have the same label. Two people can have what you think to be identical beliefs. Right? They can say, yes, I believe in the Yeti. The other person says, yes, I believe the Yeti is alive as well. You know, they both say the same exact thing. They both appear to have exactly the same belief. And yet, they may be very different. If we start to unpack this belief by what? Asking good questions, then whole other things can begin to preach. So, as an example, if you say, well, how do you know that? Or what makes it that way? Or where does that come from? You start opening the suitcase. One suitcase you open up and my God, there's tons of stuff in there. There's books the person's read. There's videos they've seen. There's articles they've heard. Their father used to track the Yeti because it ate all their chickens. You know, they saw footprints. You know, they got tons of information back in there. You know, so we open their suitcase, it's like, wow, tons of stuff. And you might even think, oh gosh, well, that's what it takes. Now I know. That's what it takes to believe in the Yeti, is having all that information. So you assume that the other person who has that same stated belief, same icon on their computer screen, has that same stuff inside. So you ask them, well, how do you know that the Yeti exists? And they say, well, I don't know. I just heard it once from somebody, you know? So all they've got basically is a pair of socks, you know, this old pair of socks and this moth flying up. That's all they got in their suitcase. They didn't pack very extensively for this journey, you know? So, by the way, who do you think would be easier to persuade? You know, the guy with all the stuff inside or the guy with just the socks? Chances are, of course, it'd be easier to persuade this person because they have no evidence, very little evidence to support their belief. The first guy would say, well, you know, what about this? And you say, yeah, but this, or but this, but this. He'd have tons of ways of holding on to his belief. Whereas this person, not so much. Isn't necessarily true that he will be easy to persuade, however, people are funny. Sometimes they have very minimal evidence, and yet they will hold on to their belief because, I don't know, they're afraid to change, or they just are determined, or whatever. So they'll find their own ways of holding on to their belief, whether or not it's, you know, logical. But what sleight of mouth can do is, once you've listened to the person, once you've unpacked their belief, found out what's inside there, what's, what's beneath all that, you find out every single belief has the same structure. If you ask a person, you know, I believe in Santa Claus, you say, well, why? Why do you believe in Santa Claus? Or why do you believe in the Yeti? Or why, why do you think of this? They'll say, well, because, and your ears should perk up at that moment. Because as soon as you hear the word because, you're about to hear a belief. The word because, right, has in it what? Cause. Cause, effect is a major component to beliefs. Cause effect, we draw it like this. We, that visual representation, cause effect. It's an if then. If this, then that. Right, so the person says, well, because my father used to track the Yeti, because I saw that article, I read that book. You know, because of that, if this, then yes, there's a Yeti. And then what they do, what people do, what you do, what I do, what everyone does, is we also attach a meaning to it. This is a complete normalized belief structure, it's called. And this meaning part is a part of every belief. People will call this the complex equivalence. And that's true, it is. And it is also part of the entire belief system, the normalized belief structure. It's part of it. They're not just simply separate things. They travel together. They do, always do, every case. You just have to unpack it further. You have to ask more questions. They say, well, so what does that mean to you? How does that impact you in your life? Well, that means I don't go outside because the Yeti might get me, you know, or it means I must go find him. You know, I must take an adventure cruise and find him, you know, go, go and find that Yeti. I must prove that he exists to the world. You know, take definitive pictures. You know, so there are different meanings that can be attached to things. What sleight of mouth then does, what's great and wonderful about sleight of mouth, is it gives you the ability, once you've unpacked all this belief structure, to decide where you're going to interface with this. You know, it's kind of like the analogy I use sometimes, you know, James Bond is so powerful, not because he's 
the biggest, strongest guy in the world, but because he's got all the most toys. You know, he's got that watch that turns into a missile launcher. You know, he's got that, you know, that pen that also can be a breathing apparatus to swim underwater for 10 minutes, you know, to get away from the sharks. You know, he's got all these options. Flexibility is power. So once you have found out, you know, what their structures, and we're gonna draw it a little bit differently this way, you know, X equals Y is the complex equivalence way of drawing it. So this would be the uh, circle that's attached to it, right? So we're gonna just draw it differently for, for now. What sleight of mouth does is once you've understood what their belief is and you've chosen where's the place that's best for you to enter the system, if you will, then you have 14 different patterns, 14 different ways of responding verbally to say to the person, hey, look at it from this perspective. Because you can say, you know, isn't this more important than that? and use a hierarchy of criteria pattern. You can say, oh, well, the consequence of this, and use the consequence pattern. You can say, well, that's not even the issue at all. The real issue is, and use this another outcome pattern. You can make up a little story, a metaphor, you know, tell a story about your point of view, and use this metaphor pattern. You can redefine the terms that are being said, and use the redefined patterns. You can choke down, use the choke down pattern. You can exaggerate and use this blow up pattern. You can give them a reason why that's not true. Give them a counterexample, counterexample pattern. You can use the intent pattern. You can use the model of the world pattern or the reality strategy pattern. You can use this apply to self pattern, apply the belief right back to the person. You can use the changing frame size pattern or you can use the meta frame pattern. These are all options that are available to you with sight of mouth so that you can interface most effectively with that person and even using them in combinations. You know, start with like, oh, I know your intention is to do this, but what you're really doing is that. So don't you really want to do this? You know, you can use different ones in combination. It's wonderful and powerful stuff. It's the way that you can most effectively persuade another person in an elegant fashion. They don't even know you're doing a technique. It's so conversational, but you just elegantly have them look at it from a different way and say, look, it's different from over here, isn't it? So you've elegantly led them to a new perception. Sleight of mouth is like that. It's an elegant means of reframing. And that's what you do when you change beliefs. So thanks a lot for listening and I hope you enjoy your explorations. <laughs>